the incredible sequel of the sequel of the original game of High Seas Adventure is finally here. This is Flick the Ship 3. Flick the Ship 3 is a 2 to 4 player turn based pencil and paper game of naval combat. The goal of the game is to defeat all the other players and collect gold. To set up, you'll need a flagship. You are allowed one flagship throughout your career. And when this flagship sinks, you have to get a new one. You start out with a level one. Here is the ship card for a level one gunboat, the lowest tier of ship and the ship that you start out with when you play or when your old ship sinks. Let's look at the parts of this card. Here we have a line to put the name of your ship on. My ship is called the Polywog. Then we have uh, the label of what kind of ship this is. This is a level one gunboat. Then we have a box to draw your flag. Then we have five boxes here to list how many gold pieces, experience points, ammunition, bombs, and conch shells you have. Plus an extra box for whatever you like. Then there are four statistics that describe your ship. There's HP, which stands for health points. ATK, which stands for attack. SPD, which stands for speed. And RNG, which in this case does not mean random number generator, but means range. Then there are six fish, six crabs, and six octopodes. And we'll get into what those mean later. Let's, uh, let's first examine what these statistics uh, actually mean. So your health points is how many times you can be hit before your ship sinks. A level one gunboat can be hit three times. So let's say my ship got hit, then I would mark off a heart. So I have two HP left. And then when I get a bottle of rum, then I get that heart back. Attack is how much, how many hearts you can take away from another player. Or how many hearts that you destroy, I guess, on another player. So a gunboat can only do one damage at a time. So uh, if my ship was hit by a gunboat, which has an attack of one, then I would subtract one heart. But maybe uh, a level two schooner, it has an attack power of two. So I would subtract, subtract two hearts from my HP. Speed is how many times you can flick to get... Uh, how many times you can flick to move. And I'll show you how to flick later. And then range is how many times you can flick to shoot a cannon. That's basically the, the ship card and how, how that works. When you level up, you transfer all this information onto your new ship card. So we, we have a level one gunboat, and then it would turn into a level two schooner. And you can see that the HP goes up, the attack goes up, and uh, but everything else uh, stays the same. So you get to transfer over the flag, uh, the ship name, all your gold, uh, ammunition, bombs, and conch shells, and fish, but not the XP because your XP gets like reset. So, oh, and of course, I guess there's there's more too. Then you go into a brig after you get you get a brig. I mean, you don't go to the brig. <laughs> you get a brig when you level up again, and then a frigate when you level up again, and then. A man of war when you level up again, and the man of war is the most powerful flagship. So then, that's the setup. Now let's get into the actual gameplay. So it is a turn based game for two to four players. So one of the players does their move, does their turn, and then the next player to the left or right 
just whichever is agreed does their turn, and then the next player and the next player, around and around until a winner is declared. So what can you do on your turn? Basically, you get two actions. You can attack, or you can move, or you could do nothing, or you could do just one of those. Let's cover movement. How does movement work? Okay, well basically, here's a map, and this is what you would play on. One of the players would draw the map. Uh, we'll get into that later. So let's say my ship is right here, and I want to go uh, and collect this box of ammunition. The way I would do that is by moving. So I declare that I'm going to move, and then I put my pencil on my ship, on, on the line, you know, the edges, not the insides, on the line of my ship. I put my pencil there, and then I hold the tip of the pencil with my finger, and then I flick the bottom of the pencil. And you can see it, it draws a line. And then I draw my ship in its new spot, right on the end of the line. And I erase the old ship. So in this case, I got it. I got that box of shot. Uh, so then I, I guess scribble this out because this is, this is a printed map. But on a, a drawn map, you can just erase that. That's movement. And so a gunboat, for instance, has a speed of three. That means I can, I can flick three times or up to three times before I move. So let's say I'm in this new location. All the other players have taken their turns. It's my turn again. Then let's say I want to go like over here. Let's see if I can make it past these buoys. So I would flick. Okay. The end of the line is right about here. And I'd oh, flick again and flick one more time. There we go. And I'm in that new location now. And a gunboat, fun fact, is the only boat with a speed of three. All other boats have a speed of two or lower. Uh, shooting or firing, whatever you want to call it, works the same way you declare that you are going to shoot and let's say i'm gonna i want to shoot this giant crab i say i'm going to shoot and i only have a range of one a, or i mean a gunboat only has a range of one so that means i can flick one time so this 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 boss is kind of far away so let's see if i can make this flick count oh got him just barely the end of the line is right on his little claw so i hit him that's moving and attacking. And that that's where, like, that's, that's the fun part, right? You know, this is what the game is all about. So, uh, let's see. We've covered... So now, let's talk about the C Shaper. The C Shaper is the player, or uh, not the player. They don't have to play in there if they don't want to. The C Shaper basically draws the maps. Now... Maps have to have more than one player on them. So a sea shaper can't just make a field, you know, a field of treasure chests for one player to take. There has to be two players fighting for, at least two players fighting for those resources. And I should also say that when there's one player left, the game immediately ends. So if, if a sea shaper for some reason, made a huge field of chests, and one of the players dies, one of the two players dies, without anyone taking a treasure chest before he died, then the game immediately ends, and they don't get anything. But now, let's talk about what the Sea Shaper... Or, I mean, how to collect these objects. So, for instance, here is a box of shot, which you shot which you saw I collected by moving on it. Uh, here's a treasure chest. Um, here's a bottle of rum. Here is a keg. Um, here's a bomb over here. Basically, you can collect these items by either moving on them or shooting at them. Except for buried treasure. 
buried treasure, you have to move on it. So yeah, moving, move on an item or shoot on it. So now let's let's talk about the the C shaper finally. Jeez. Okay, so now we know how to play. We know how to move and attack and all the parts of the ship and all of that. But now we need a place to play on, which is the job of the C shaper. The C shaper draws the map. But what can they put on the map? Here is a little diagram I've made that shows all the things, well, almost all the things you can put on a map. This is a coastline. Uh, this is just a little island. So the inside of the coast is denoted by this solid line, and where the water starts is by the uh, dotted lines, which are supposed to look like ripples. So water, you can, you know, move on your turn. Land, you can move every... When you're on land, when you're on land, you can move every other turn. It, it slows you down. Then we have a chest. Chests are little rectangles, and when you move on them or shoot at them, you collect 1 to 60 gold doubloons. And the way you... You can either use a random number generator online, or if you have the special... If you have special dice like I do, then you can roll the die. Next, we have a... Uh, rocks and mountains. Rocks and rocks can be in the water or on land, and basically what they do is they block players from going certain places. So if you flick into a rock or past a rock, you are stopped by the rock, and you suffer one attack point. So like they hurt you if you move into them. Buoys and trees are similar, but they don't hurt you. So trees are for land, buoys are for water. Uh, then we have buried treasure, which is like treasure chests but on land, and they contain 1 to 120 gold pieces. Or gold doubloons, I mean. Now they can't be shot at to be collected. You have to move on them to dig them up. So it's a bit of a risk-reward thing there. Then we have boxes of shot. When you get your ship... You don't have any you don't have any ammo. You have no ammunition. So that's what these are for. When you shoot at or move onto a box of shot, you get one to four cannonballs, which you put on your on your card. And every time you make an attack, you have to you have to subtract one cannonball from your inventory. Then we have bombs, uh, which also have a spot on the inventory right here bombs bombs are light cannonballs but when you use them they create uh oh i don't have a oh i do <laughs> they create dime sized explosions and these explosions can take away uh parts of land like this so that's all gone or they can uh destroy mountains and rocks like this or buoys, or items, or pretty much anything except for maelstroms and storm clouds. Uh, but other than that, other than other than those things, they can they can destroy everything. So bombs are a valuable resource. If you attack another player with a bomb, they it it does it's no more damage. It's only like it it's your attack damage, but that's it. Then we have bottles of rum. Rum heals you. Uh, a bottle of rum heals 1 HP, and a keg of rum heals 5 HP, and they also give you some experience points. Uh, check the document, which is linked in the description below. It, it goes into much more detail about all these things. Uh, anyway, here's a maelstrom. Maelstroms can be any size. It depends on, the, you know, the C-shaper. But basically, it's like a much, much, MUCH worse rock. If you land in it, or go past it, you die instantly. You just die. Your ship sinks. 
and uh, all your valuables, so all of your gold and ammunition and bombs and conch shells and fish and everything like that uh, is lost to the sea and the other opponent uh, doesn't get it. Storm clouds, actually let's let's start with docks. Uh, docks are where players start. They're like the flicking off point. So let's say here, let's look in the back of this map. Here we have a map uh, and then here's the dock. So I, I start here. So I'm like, okay, I want to get from here. Oh wait, can't see that. <laughs> So I just started playing and I want to get from here to this box of shot. And then I just go like this and go boom. Oh, I didn't make it. Anyway, that's how docks work. So they're like the most important. They're basically the most important part of the game. Then we have reefs, which are where you get fish, crabs, and octopuses. Uh, more details about that are on the document. It... I'm not going to go into it right now. And the last thing is storm clouds. Storm clouds are... It's like a shield that you can go into. So when you go into a storm cloud, every turn you stay there, you, you flip a coin, and if you get tails, then you're shocked by lightning, and you take one attack. But a player on the outside can shoot into a storm cloud, for a 50% chance of attacking you. So if another player shoots you, they flip a coin. If they get heads, then they hit you. But the really cool thing about these is that storm clouds can be any shape. You know, you could have a you could have one that's like a circle, or you could have one that like, you know, goes around corners like that. And the really cool part is that once you're in a storm cloud, you don't have to leave from the point that you entered. You can you can flick off of the storm cloud at any point along the perimeter. So if I was in this one, for instance, I could flick off here, or I could flick off here, or here, you know, or here. Anywhere. Anywhere along the perimeter. And that's pretty cool. I'm excited to see what players, what maps players make with, uh, with storm clouds. You can put your map submissions in r slash flick the ship maps to subreddit. I just made, uh, there's a couple maps I've made already, where actually you can find this map on the subreddit. I think it's, I think it's good for beginners, so I haven't play tested it, because I don't, there's like, you know, no one wants to play. <laughs> I don't have anyone to play with. That's why I need your guys' help. Uh, the game is in, in alpha, uh, of course. So, that's it. That's base. this is like all you need to know about how to start playing Flick the Ship. So let's go, let's go through everything once more. You start out with a gunboat, you have three HP, one attack, three speeds, you can flick three times to move, up to three times, you don't have to go the full three, and a range of one, so you can flick once to shoot. You can collect gold, XP, ammunition, bombs, and you can buy conch shells from the FTS catalog, which is also on the document. You can find the document either in the description down below or on the r slash flick the ship map subreddit. There's a, a pinned post that has the link to the dock. And then once you level up, you go to a schooner, which has better stats. Then you go to a brig, then you go to a frigate, and then you go to a man of war. And once you're playing, you have two things you can do on your turn. You can move and attack. And you have to announce it before you go. The goal of the game is to collect gold and experience and defeat monsters and kill the other players to become the biggest, baddest pirate in all the seven seas. That's it. That's how you play. But how do you play without risking losing your ship? And that's what mini games are for. So with all of the gold that you've amassed, well, for one thing, you can use the catalog to buy uh, rum to heal yourself after a game, or uh, more ammunition, or a conch shell, but you can also buy mini ships. Mini ships, they're not like smaller than regular ships, 
they're ships that have special powers and when they sink you don't lose them forever you get to keep them uh, the only thing about mini ships is that they can't collect gold so when you're playing a mini game there wouldn't be any any gold on the map mini ships also have infinite ammo so boxes of shot wouldn't be on a, a mini game map either mini ships can't fight flagships so flagships and mini ships they're separate they they can't like interact with each other flagships are for serious campaign games where you have to collect gold uh to make you know to to get mini ships like you have a flagship so you can get mini ships also in mini games you can play as monsters which is really cool Make sure to check out the document. It's linked down below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped. Maybe I made it more confusing. Maybe not. I hope I'm more clear. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll, I'll answer that. I'll answer them, I mean. And um, do some, do some playtesting for me. <laughs> Let's get this game out of alpha.